Today we're going to be looking at something called WebAssembly and I have been playing around with this for like about the past week and it has some like really interesting and fun uses. So basically this video hopefully will let you understand where to get started and how to like set everything up and what you can do with it. So what is WebAssembly and also more importantly why is WebAssembly? And the main problem lies in the fact that JavaScript is relatively slow. It is perfectly fine for stuff like, you know, processing a button press and interacting with elements on a website or like sending data to and from servers. But the problem is that if you want to do something that's more computationally expensive, for example, making a 3D video game, it usually is not that great. And WebAssembly basically allows you to run other programming languages such as C on the web. And it does that by translating the programming language into this binary instruction format and then it runs it as like a binary compiled form which is much much faster than javascript however it is it isn't like oh now you can use python on the web and you can just not use uh, javascript anymore it's more like they can do computations but they have to communicate and work together with javascript because there's no such thing such as like document.get element by id in the other programming languages you had to send some data and then use javascript to process that data and like put it actually on the screen. And the website is webassembly.org. You can just type that into the URL bar and just go here. And now let's go to the getting started part. And it doesn't have too many information except there's something called I want to use WebAssembly from. And you can see there's a list of languages you can use. C, C++, Rust, Assembly Script, and Swift, D, Pascal, Zig. There's a lot of them. What we're going to use today is something called Assembly Script. And it says that it's like a TypeScript-like syntax. And the reason we're doing this is that because it's very similar to JavaScript, you probably don't need to know two languages. If you know JavaScript or a little bit of TypeScript, this should be pretty easy for you. So that is the one that we're going to use. So the website for AssemblyScript is assemblyscript.org. And when you go here, you can see that it provides a pretty simple code snippet for how to calculate the Fibonacci number in AssemblyScript. And you can see the syntax is basically exactly the same as JavaScript, except it has these things, which are basically it declares the type of the input and the type of the return value. And both of these are i32, meaning it's a 32-bit signed integer. And other than that, it's just your regular JavaScript. You can see here, this is basically what it kind of compiles into. And this is something called the WAT file. So it's not actually the binary. The binary also gets translated into a form that's a little bit more human readable. But there's another WASM file, which is the actual kind of like the binary format. And in the index.html, you can see that you basically just kind of load it and you call the function exports.fib here. And when you run it, you can see that it gives you Fibonacci 0112358.13, like you would expect. And this will be much faster than if you were to just do the whole thing in JavaScript. So let us create a HTML file like you would with any other website. Basically just save it as index.html anywhere on your desktop, for example. And just, you know, create the default starting template whenever you can just say, name the title uh, web assembly. And here, let's just leave that alone and move on to the assembly part. So you're going to have to need to have npm installed for this. And one way you can do it is use npm init and set it up according to the assembly script website documentation. But also it creates a bunch of folders, a build folder, assembly folder with a bunch of other files and configs, which does work but it's a little bit confusing when you're just starting out. So another way that you can do it is just like install assembly script globally like that. And I already have it installed, but once you wait for it to install, you're like actually good to go. All you need to do now is just create a file called index.ts or whatever.ts. And it's TypeScript because assembly script is based on TypeScript and you can just use a TypeScript uh, index. And just as a basic example, let's make a function that just returns a number. So let's say export function, return num. And also we have to do this syntax called, with a colon i32 for the 32-bit integer. And all we need to do is basically return, for example, 5 semicolon. That's all we have to do for a very simple example. And the keyword export basically makes it so that your JavaScript can actually view the function kind of. And here what we do is basically at the bottom of your terminal, type the command asc for the compiler. And we just need to type the name of the file without the extension index. 
dash o for the name of the output file and what you can do is let's just say index of wasm like that so when you open up this file you can see that it might be in this like weird format and most text editors don't read it very well but that's don't worry that's probably correct and now what we can do is basically just switch back to our index.html and we can just make like a script tag if it actually works and here what we can do is essentially just uh, write a little bit of code to read and like us do it so we're going to call webassembly.instantiate streaming and here we're going to pass in two parameters first of them is like the file of the, that ha actually has the uh, thing so basically we can just call fetch and then we just say index.webassembly like that and the second part is this thing called an import object we're not going to worry about it right now there isn't too much that we kind of have to do and that's basically it and this is kind of like a promise so we have to do dot then we're, we can just basically kind of have like the uh, thing so let's just say there's uh, objects that's returned let's just name it that and we can create an arrow function and here so before we do anything how about we just uh, console dot log the object like that so now I have opened up the HTML file on my browser and also opened up the console. So here on the right, you can see a console.log the object. And in here, you can see there's something called a module and an instance. What we want is the instance. And here there's another thing called export. And you can find that our number return num is in this exports object. So to call that function, all we need to do is basically kind of do something like let exports equals to object dot instance dot exports like that. And then what we can just do is console.log exports.returnum, just like that, and call the function like normal. And you can see that it returns our desired value of 5. And here, let's just make like another example. Let's say export function, let's make another function called add. And we can just do a 32-bit uh, 32. Can you not? Thank you. Uh, B is also an I32 and also it returns an integer. So now what we can do is basically just say return A plus B like that. And what you have to remember to do is essentially uh, recompile it so it actually, you know, changes the wasm. Sometimes when you forget to do that, nothing will happen basically. Uh, now what we can do is basically just call the add function and we can, let's just try uh, 1 and 5. And you can see it gives us a value of 6 like we expected. So essentially this is how you can ask WebAssembly to do a very complicated calculation and send you back the result. So what if you want to do it the other way around and basically call a JavaScript function from WebAssembly? What you can do is go to this object that I left empty before called the imports object. And here we can just make some whatever parameter called uh, for example log. And then after that inside we can just say int and this thing basically would be a function that can take in a value. All I would do is just console.log that value. So now when we switch back to the WebAssembly code, what we can do is just use the decorator called at external like that. And what we can use is uh, write the name of the object. So it's log and then int. And now what we can write is basically declare function log int like that so we can name it something new and that will take in a value of i32 and now whenever we do something let's say let's move this to the bottom so it's less confusing what we can do is uh, log int and just call that function and let's say pass it in a when we recompile you can see that I forgot this one just thing but we also have to, when it doesn't return anything, we have to use void. But other than that, you can see it logs 1, which is our first number, and then it logs 6. So you can see how it's kind of calling the log function from JavaScript inside of WebAssembly in this situation. So just to give you an example of how much faster this is compared to JavaScript, I just made a very simple function that basically just takes the number starting at 0, and then goes to a loop each time adding 1, 1 billion times. And you can see that when you reload, it takes about like a second-ish for it to do it in WebAssembly, right? And if we're going to do it in the JavaScript code, let's just uncomment this and do it that, that. 
you can see that it takes quite a while longer when you reload. And you can see after we waited for like around 10 seconds, it finally loaded. So you can see that the massive speed improvement it gave. And this is assembly script, so it's not even like the fastest form of WebAssembly and you can make it like optimized a bit more. And the point is that WebAssembly is much faster than JavaScript. And I could go on to make a lot more complicated functions than this, of course, but this is really the basics that you really need to know. There's a bunch of other examples on the website. Another cool thing about WebAssembly is that it and JavaScript kind of have a common shared memory that you can use to kind of pass around more complicated like data forms other than ints. Let's just go to a blank WebAssembly file and you can call memory.grow1 to give it like a bit more memory. And now what we can do is use a function called store with these like brackets. And here we're going to type the type, which is i32. And then we'll use parentheses. And then this has two parameters you pass in. First is a location and second is a value. Let's just say location zero, basically. And pass in the value, let's say a 15, why not? And now when we recompile this, and we can just switch to uh, HTML. And here what we can do to access the memory in JavaScript is essentially to do let memory equals to export exports.memory. So it's like a parameter in the exports object. Let's just console.log the memory at first. And you can see what it gives you. It's basically like this function with the grow and also it has a thing called like an array buffer and then there's a bunch of other stuff. So you, what we actually need to do is basically let mem array equals to mem array memory. Okay. Did not intend to do that. But uh, what we can do is just int 32 array like this and then we just pass in memory dot buffer. And now when we console.log the mem array, you can see that, oh yeah, we need to do new. You can see that now there's 15 in the first position and then zero for everything else. So you can see that we can access some memory that uh, the assembly script is set. And here's another thing we can do is basically, let's say position five, we want to set that to 25. What we can do is that when we recompile this, you can see that here, this thing becomes six something something like that and the reason is that it's not 25 in position 5 is that each individual thing is kind of its own bit kind of so when you set it to like a different one it's not that each of these is like a separate position and because of that when it's like offset a bit it would be 6400 something like that and this is basically how you can access memory between each other and that's where I'm going to end it for this video. And basically, you can see that WebAssembly, once you know how it works, it's pretty easy to set up. You can use it to calculate stuff that's very hard to calculate normally with JavaScript. And of course, there's a lot more stuff to do. On the WebAssembly website, you can see that there's a bunch of other languages that I haven't gotten into. And you can see that there's, for example, C or C++. And basically, you can just go and there's this documentation that's pretty useful. And you can see here's basically how you do it. And really, it is the way you get it on the JavaScript side is pretty similar, but you need to have like different compilers to compile it into WebAssembly. And you can let me know if you want me to do a video about this, maybe. Another thing that you can do is that on the assembly script page, there's a button to the GitHub, and there's a very informational repository somewhere called examples. And there's a bunch of examples of using WebAssembly to you know do stuff. For example, this is comics Game of Life. And you can see inside of here, there's a bunch of stuff and you can just browse through the code and see how they work. And it's pretty cool. Another very useful website is something called wasmbyexample.dev. This one that I found has a lot of very cool concepts. For example, just like hello world, which is really helpful to tell you how you code, you can get started. And there are also other languages, not just assembly script. And you can see that this is for C and it also has a bunch of very useful tutorials for many different languages. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.